Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fisher. Welcome to bonus weather video number three for this weekend. I do want to thank all of you for responding the way you uh, did uh, and still do, still continue to do, in terms of giving me ideas for these videos. Got a real good response, and I'm going to deal with uh, the first of them today. Uh, one of the subscribers asked, you know, how do we, I hear about waves of low pressure moving along a front, and how, how does that happen, or, you know, what's going on there? So I thought we would tackle that one, and uh, I will get to as many of the other ones as I can uh, in the coming days and weeks. So I'll put myself down here in the corner, and we're going to talk about the anatomy of a front. First of all, okay, so these red dotted lines are isotherms, or lines of equal temperature, okay? And we're going to label them as T, T plus 1, T plus 2, T plus 3, and T plus 4. And the warmest one is the T plus 4 on the south end there. And a frontal system is always on the, uh, on the boundary between warm air and the beginning of the cold air, okay? All of the temperature gradients, if you will, where you have temperatures going from, you know, warm to cold or cold to warm, are always on the cold side of the boundary, okay? So if we put a stationary front in here, denoted by these alternating blue triangles and red semicircles, then this would be the warmest, uh, this would be uniformly warm down in here, and then we would start to gradually get into the cold air here. And, and sometimes it can be you know, more impressive than gradual. I mean, some of these wintertime cold fronts, you can drop like a rock in a matter of just a few minutes. Uh, but the basic idea is the cooling begins as you get onto the cold side of the boundary and gradually gets colder and colder as you go farther and farther behind the front. Okay, so let's say on the cold side of the front, we have a northeasterly flow at the surface, okay? And then on the warm side, we have a southwesterly flow. And in this situation, because these arrows are coming together, we have convergence going on along that front, okay? And so, convergence increases vorticity, or spin. Now, what's a good way to look at that? Well, if you have a skater in the Olympics and their arms are extended, I know that my hands are out beyond the picture here, but you know what I mean, they're fully extended, and then, and they're spinning, and then they bring those arms in, and they start to spin about a smaller and smaller radius, and because of the conservation of what we call angular momentum, then they start to spin faster. So anytime you have any existing vorticity at all, and you imply a convergent wind field on it, you are going to increase the amount of vorticity. And once that begins to happen, then the pressure uh, pattern has to adjust to that, okay? Uh, otherwise, there would be an imbalance in the atmosphere. And so, as vorticity increases, the pressure pattern, uh, ha or the pressure distribution, if you will, has to adjust to that increasing vorticity, okay? And along with that, you get pressure falls. Okay, so now we still have our front, and this is how the upper and the lower atmosphere synergize, okay? So, in the upper atmosphere, we have a trough, okay, or in this case, what we would call a short wave, okay, where the wavelength is not all that terribly long, but the upper level winds would basically go from northwest to southeast, and then turn and go from southwest to northeast, and the trough axis would be in here. And we oftentimes with these things talk about vorticity maximum, or maxima, depending on if there's more than one, and Ahead of these vorticity maxima, you get divergence aloft. So if the air is spreading apart up here, it's got to be coming together in the low levels, and then you have rising motion and clouds and precipitation uh, between, those two, uh, uh, between those two processes that are going on. So again, if, we have, if this is inducing convergence of the ground, it's going to increase the vorticity again, which is going to lead to even more pressure falls, and if there are more, if, if the rising motion and the divergence aloft and the convergence of the ground is greater in one area than it is anywhere else around it. And really, I know I had a professor at Penn State that I thought described this beautifully, uh, is that he said the surface weather map is basically just a reflection of the patterns that are being induced by the upper atmosphere because the forces up there are so much stronger most times than they are here at the ground. So the surface weather map is basically a reflection of what's going on up there. So if one of these little vorticity maxima come along and they start to, or it starts to increase uh, the divergence aloft and the convergence of the ground, 
in one area more than another, then you get the formation of a low pressure area where the pressure is lower than it is anywhere else. And then if that low begins to intensify, then this part of the stationary front would become a cold front because the counterclockwise flow around it would be driving the colder air southward. And over here, this would become a warm front as we'd have a southerly wind and the cold air would be retreating and the warm air would be coming in to replace it. And this is your classic, what we call Norwegian cyclone model that you know was uh, basically, uh, oh, developed, I don't know why I can't talk today, developed years and years and years ago, but it still holds true today, is that once you get an area of low pressure to form along a boundary, if that low intensifies, then part of the stationary front becomes cold, part of it becomes warm, and as that happens, that deepens the upper air wave, which creates more divergence aloft and more convergence of the ground. And uh, the two just feed off each other until eventually the low goes through what we call an occlusion process, where it is separated from all the temperature contrast, no longer has any real source of energy, and it begins to finally fall apart. Uh, but uh, the upper atmosphere and the lower atmosphere definitely play together a lot in the atmosphere. And this is an example, or one example, of that uh, synergy, if you will. Okay, I hope that made a little bit of sense. That is the bonus weather video for this uh, Friday. The next one, of course, will be coming up on Monday and the next daily weather update coming up on Monday as well. So you have a wonderful, wonderful Friday evening and an even better weekend, and we'll talk to you again on Monday. See you later, everybody.